Nazi. Okay. Um, so, the Universal Five in your Leviathan universe, can you remind me of their names? Madam Shear, Dentrini, Pym, Colossa, and Kaijericus. Okay. And then, do each of them have, like, origin stories? Yeah, yeah. Madam Shear. When she was a child, instead of watching cartoons, she watched American war documentaries. And by adulthood, she um, became the founder and CEO of Later Tech Industries, which is meant to build futuristic weapons for the United States to use in future battles. Mm -hmm. After getting her place ransacked by a gang of criminals, she ended up having her arms amputated from the elbow down, but her main computer system saved her life by giving her, like, these bladed augmentations in the place of her elbow down. Hmm. And after getting martial arts training from a blind martial arts instructor known as Sight, she uh, stopped Boss Savage from making a uh, terrorist attack with the stolen weapons. And that was her very first successful mission and she was hailed as a hero and they called her Madame Shear ever since. Her real name is Dr. Kimberly Elinda Blader. So does the United States and everything exist on the um, basic Earth? The default Earth default and Earth. the Alpha Earth. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so that was Madame Shear's backstory, or origin story. What's uh, Pim's or Pim? Pim? Pim, yes. Pim. What's Pim her? Pim is a Lunarian. They mm -hmm. are a species of humanoid alien. They're like 15 feet tall, around 500 pounds, extremely dense skeletons, and they also have evolved with amplified spleens to the point where they have their own built-in energy source without ever to need like fossil fuels, for example. After her home planet was destroyed by the home star detonating, turns out she was adopted to a, a married couple somewhere in a suburban town up north of the state of New York. And she was so smart that she never needed to go to school because she was like Einstein level smart by six years old. She eventually moved out and she uh, had her own headquarters in the, somewhere in the Sahara Desert called the Fortress of Heroism. And she vows to be a hero. Is it common for Lunarians to like have Einstein level smarts or yeah, is she? Yeah, they are known okay. for their intelligence, yes. Oh, cool. Um, okay, that was Madame Shear and Pim. Is, is Pim Pim's name or does she have. Her real name is Penelope Ingrid Myers. So but her initials spell out Pim. That's cool. Um, okay, and then our next one is Colossa. Yes. Shannon Murray. Her mother is Carol, who is a demigoddess and a child of goddess, which means that goddess, who is the creator of the cosmos and founder and leader of the alpha gods, is Colossus' grandmother. What's her name? Uh, goddess. Goddess? Okay, cool. Her real name is Alexa Mighty. As I was saying, Carol abandoned Shannon to be only with her dad, Howard Murray, who was a human. Mm -hmm. And due to the, uh, the loss of her mother due to her, like, leaving her, she grew up with clinical depression and a fear of everything, but after being tested on by the Blue Man Clan, which is the Leviathan Universe equivalent of S.H.I.E.L.D., she was granted with a variety of different capabilities, infinite growing capacity, like martial arts, pheromones, she could shoot nuclear beams from her hands, she could break the fourth wall, very sophisticated, very optimistic compared to what she used to be. You yeah. know, she has her own hotel and mm -hmm. headquarters called Murray Tower. Mm -hmm. And how tall is she? The shortest she could ever be, as far as I know, is six feet eight inches. Okay. But she can grow to any size. Infin infinite. Okay. Cool. Um, let's see, that was three. Densdrini and Kaijericus. Densdrini and Kaijericus. Okay. Uh, what's Dens Denstrini? <laughs> what's Denstrini's origin story? Denstrini is the biological daughter of Tartara. Tartara 
is the daughter of Satana, founder and ruler of Tartarus, former love interest for Adam Cook, which her real name is Lilith Cook. Mm -hmm. um, and turns out uh, Tartara had a daughter with Commander Carnage, who already had a wife and a daughter. So after getting divorced, Tartara had to leave her child up to adoption by Dr. Betty Trevers, who is an entrepreneur at the time for Paranormal Defense, which is a special corporation dealing with, like, oddities, otherworldly occurrences, supernatural occurrences, and, like, Denstrini, her real name is Deborah Debbie Trevers, but her biological name is Deetalus. Got it. She has, like, a right hand made of Tartarus stone, like, and it symbolizes the full power of Tartarus as a whole, which is the underworld. It has different runes coded all across it, and each individual rune could allow a certain enchantment to manifest. You know? Yeah, that's really cool. And then, Kaijericus? Kaijericus. Her real name is Kiko Marakami. Her father is Japanese, and her mother is Caucasian. And she lived in Japan most of her life. Mm -hmm. When she learned that her mother died in a collision course, she ended up getting distracted at work when she was working at a nuclear power plant facility. Mm -hmm. And she ended up falling into a vat of nuclear chemicals. A full month later, she mutated into, like, 458-foot-tall reptilian kaiju woman. But after she was defeated by a gynarmican, known as Gymoscoricus, she, over time, gained back her mentality, so she was actually a hero and no longer a direct threat to humanity, mm -hmm. or the innocents, I should say. Yeah. And she is considered queen of the mutants. Yeah. And she even has her own DNA system known as K-cells, which is capable of mutating organic matter. That's even really if cool. it's dead. And so then, the Universal Five, do they usually work together, or do they, they only come together? They are affiliated with each other. Yeah. But do they, like, only come together in certain situations? Whenever they feel it to be necessary. Okay. Um, what was their, like, most recent big fight, or big bad? Well, I know for a promise that it must have been something due to the infinite varieties, but it's most likely something that isn't accounted for, at least as of yet. Mm -hmm. But I know for a promise that there's a lot of stuff that I'm unaware of, due to its infinite variety of stuff within this infinite onion that yeah. is a multiverse. Yeah. That's definitely <laughs> a lot. Um, is what are, what are, in your opinion, some of the most interesting animal species in the Leviathan universe? Uh, it depends. Like, you could be referring to biological hybrids, alien species, uh, prehistoric life, mythical life, and they're all meant to coexist for mm -hmm. the sake of, like, like, the best utopia is when everybody gets along, no matter how different anyone or anything ever is. Yeah. Is that at the core of the Leviathan universe? Like That's official unity? in the default dimension, but it's not guaranteed in every reality. In fact, there are some realities that never had it. Got it. But it's guaranteed for the default dimension in terms of the three main laws. The All Creatures Project, the Inhuman Privacy Act, and the Recovery Act. Could you go into more depth on those? Yeah, the All Creatures Project, where every species shall coexist and every species shall be treated equally. Mm -hmm. The Inhuman Privacy Act is where all superhumans have their full identities known and they still have their privacy and their personal times. And uh, the Recovery Act is a law that states that every species should always be allowed a second chance to live. Especially when it comes to, like, say, prehistoric life, mythical life, etc. Yeah. How are those laws upkept? 
by the Coexistence Council. Okay. There's like millions of members of the Coexistence Council, and each individual member symbolizes the full population of their home galaxy. Got it. And Under they're the ones in charge of all of the specific and strict decisions for the sake of coexistence as a whole. Got it. So under under the these laws, does that make most of the Leviathan universe, at least in the um, base world, or the... In the default, default dimension. Default dimension. Thank you. Um, does that mean most of them are, like, vegetarian or vegan? No, no, not at all. Like, it's always consent when it comes to... Like, people are allowed to hunt certain animals for the sake of regulating their population. Got like, it. for example, if there are too many four-headed sharks in the oceans, then they would be allowed to hunt them until the population's regulated, and then afterwards it would be outlawed. Okay. And does this exist for all species? Every species. No questions asked. It doesn't matter if it's a chimera. It doesn't matter if it's a T-Rex. It doesn't matter if it's a woolly mammoth or an alien species that's currently endangered. It doesn't matter if it's something supernatural like a ghost or a demon or a zombie. Any, like, coexistence is meant to be a blessing for everything. Yeah. And then regulating populations is also meant for everything. Yes, to make sure there isn't too much of a certain species. And that includes modifying certain animals. Mm -hmm. Like, when it comes to, like, dinosaurs, for example, mm -hmm. some of them have to be modified because they must live in the exact places where their fossil records are confirmed to be in. Which means that for some environments and some creatures, they need to be modified to properly thrive in said environments in order to keep it accurate, yet at the same time, considerate on their behalf. That makes sense. Yes. Alrighty. And also, metabolism should be kept in line. Like, some predatory animals should have their metabolisms be in a way so they don't have to eat as often. So oh, that way they wouldn't be a threat to other animals in terms of their population and their life and times. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot the name of the people that keep the laws. The Coexistence Council. The Coexistence Council. Are they the ones who determine what species is overpopulated? Yeah, you okay. can say, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, do you have plans to, like, write comic books in the future? I wish I could, but some things I have to wait until they're more um, available. Yeah. Like, I would, I would like different mediums, whether it be comic books, video games, board games, movies. But some things are out of reach for the time being, and I need to wait until they are more accessible, even if that means having to wait until someone is willing to work by my side and do those specific mediums on my behalf. Yeah. Um, have you ever thought about, like, writing short stories? I have been doing short stories, yeah. Oh, cool. Do you post them on your blog, or...? Um, I, uh... I have introduced a few stories so far, though not all of them as of yet. I have to wait until I complete my data sheets before mm -hmm. I could continue on, because I feel like if everyone knows the major characters, my Leviathan universe, albeit in the Golden Age era, mm -hmm. then they would have a better chance of understanding specific circumstances, especially when it comes to nowadays' latest stories. That makes sense. So where where have you posted your stories so far? Um, I have a folder subdivision called Leviathan Universe Stories. Okay. Is that within your blog, or...? It's not in my blog, it's on my desktop. Oh, okay. So it hasn't been, like, shared publicly yet? Not per se. I have, like, first things first. Yeah, of course. Like, before you rescue the princess, you first have to deal with the dragon. Or that whatever it happens to be. That makes sense. Um... Cool. So you keep everything like on your laptop, right? And then in your in your head. Yeah, you could say I do need some um, like 
progress in terms of the diversity and such, but then again, in due time. And yeah. I just hope that I could find people who are willing to work by my side. Like, Stan Lee had like six to eight other guys helping him with his work. Yeah. And they called it the Mighty Marvel Marching Society, or Mighty Marching Marvel Society. Like, during the 50s and 60s, they had their own radio show where they talked about their own personal lives alongside the stuff that they've been making around the same time. Yeah. You know, it was very successful. Yeah. Like, Jack Kirby, Steve Ditko, Dick Ayers, a couple other guys, I don't recall their names, but it's like six to eight guys other than Stan Lee himself. It's just Stan Lee just happened to be the most recognized to the public. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it would be really cool to get together a team like that. Yeah. Um, I need at least two people helping me with things that I wouldn't be able to do on my own. I don't want to be the only one in charge because no matter whether I like it or not, it could be at times overwhelming. Yeah. I think that fits really well into your... And I your... hope that I could get some help from USD in terms of finding those people in question. Yeah. But um, then again, I'm a bit on the fence. That's fair. Um, I think it'd be really fitting for your coexistence to work with other people on it. Um, yeah. I would make sure to give them credit as well. Yeah. I have to. Otherwise, of course. Otherwise, that would just make me a disgrace. Yeah. Um... So when, like, how old were you when you started to explore the Leviathan universe? Um, I barely completed my sophomore year of high school in June 2013, like mid to late June. Okay, and that's when you started That's creating. when I made it exist officially, like, you know? Yeah, that's really cool. Um, and have you been working on it pretty consistently since then? Yeah, yeah, practically. I have over 15,000 plus characters and creatures that are currently accounted for. Wow. But there's no chance whatsoever that I could have all the stuff within this infinite multiverse. Yeah, no, it's definitely pretty vast to. I only say have least. things that are accounted for, and there are some things that I'm completely unaware of so far that is, in fact, legit. Yeah. So, how do you discover more about your universe? Gradually, you know, like, imagine you're minding your own business and then someone hits you in the back of the head hard with a dodgeball. Yeah. That's how inspiration works. Mm -hmm. You wait until you get that spark and you can't stop thinking about the sensation after the spark until you have it properly enforced. Interesting. That's really cool. Um, so I know you mentioned Stan Lee as one of your inspirations. Do you have any other uh, creators or... H.P. Lovecraft, Stephen King, R.L. Stein. Um, trying to think. Like Anthony C. Ferrante, perhaps. He's the guy who directed the Sharknado movies. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, is there anybody... Roger Foreman. Is there anybody... Um, like close to you that helped inspire you and help um yeah yeah get you to i have are. been inspired in terms of motivation and like people who have been like giving me advice and like a chance of hope especially this one guy i had dakota trigo he was a friend a housemate of mine back in clearfield he did a tarot card reading with me through an uh, audio call, and according to his cards, if I keep doing what I'm doing right now, then I would do great things. That's really cool. At least according to what he said with the tarot cards, which, which as far as I've heard, are meant to be guaranteed. Yeah, I think there's definitely things that we can do to make, um, to influence them, though, absolutely. Yeah. So... Um, I guess, like, when did you, like, start to really dive into, like, the world of Stanley and Stephen King and all of those other inspirations? Gradually, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I watched the Stanley documentary twice with Great Power, A Stanley Story, and that's how I knew about so many specific things about his life when he was still alive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
That's really cool. Um, have you always, like, ever since you were younger, have you always been, like, super creative? Yeah, yeah. And I wouldn't be a fictionologist if it wasn't for Alan Parrish. May his actor rest in peace. Um, could you remind me who that is? Jumanji with Robin Williams. Yes. That's Alan Parrish. Got it. Yes, that is a, that is a good um, film. Yeah, that's basically what inspired me to devote my entire existence around fiction. Yeah. Um, so on the note of, like, fiction, um, I know you're really into horror movies. Can you recommend some, like, really good horror movies for One somebody? One of my favorites is The Autopsy of Jane Doe. Yeah. Among other stuff, there's, like, the Becky movies, Becky 1 and 2, Scare Package 1 and 2, there's, um like the VHS movies if you love found footage there's also the Outwaters um, there's like a movie called Mad Heidi there's uh, Dead Alive which you know Peter Jackson who made the Lord of the Rings movies mm -hmm. his very first movie he ever made was Dead Alive which was rumored to be one of the goriest horror movies to date and that was the first story he ever established before he made the Lord of the Rings movies Interesting. Believe so, it or not. Um, so could you give a list of recommendations for, like, that are specifically gore-heavy for people who really like... Autopsy of Jane Doe, there's the Evil Dead movies, in a sense, like... In a sense, you could say Human Centipede, depending on whether or not you have the, uh, the bravery or sophistication to pull through with it. Yeah. You don't have to, but it helps. Yeah. Um, what about some good recommendations for beginners, like people who don't quite have... Beetlejuice, yeah. Lisa Frankenstein, The Gate, The Blair Witch Project, as far as I know, like, the original Mummy trilogy with, uh, Brendan Fraser. That's a good one. Just different stuff. Yeah. And then do you have a good list for, like, thriller-type horror movies? Like, um, supposedly, there's Gerald's Game, there's 4x4, four four, there's, like, Fall, like, different survival stuff, there's Don't Breathe 1 and 2, there's Hush, there's The Strangers, like, different stuff. There's Orphan. Yeah, sounds like a pretty good list. Is there anything else that you wanted to talk about or discuss? Depends on if you have any more questions or or whatever, you know? Yeah, that was kind of my last question. That's fine, that's fine, and I hope it's worth it for my audience in general, because I need all of this to work for everybody. Does yep. that make any sense? Yep.